All right, welcome back to the Homestand Show. And now it's time to take a little bit of pause on Maple Leafs talk. We've done a lot of it. We're going to continue to do that in the next segment with Chris Johnson of North Star Bets. But let's welcome in friend of a show, one of our favorites. It's Andrew Zuber, the Zoob. Zoobs, how are you, my friend? I feel great. Great to be here. The, the boys are buzzing. It's, uh, it's a good time to be here. The boys are buzzing. We were just talking off air about uh, the, the, the comp in terms of Leafs, but in the MLB. And we, it's tough to come up with who, who that team is. I think you said the Tigers, maybe the Cubs. Yeah, the Cubs had that mantle for a long time. Obviously, you get the sort of like always terrible. Maybe the maybe the White Sox. The Leafs are. I mean, there's only one, right? It's sort of <laughs> one it's sort of, of one. very difficult to to compare to that. So, um, yeah, it's it's very difficult to sort of make to draw that line across sports, especially to baseball, where so few teams for a long time were even trying, and so few teams ever made the playoffs. That the teams that spent. Uh, generally did pretty well. So it's hard to find a, a direct competition. Yeah, you spend in baseball, you usually win. Okay, let's talk about the Jays. Not the greatest end to a series against the Mariners, but they were really good uh, throughout that series. And they've been good throughout the month of April. 17 and 10, Zoobs. How would you, uh, I guess, summarize or recap the month that was for the Blue Jays? Feels good. Uh, sort of a, a nice look at what the team is supposed to be. I think 104 win pace currently. And the thing that if you're a Blue Jays fan, that's probably the most inspiring is it hasn't felt like they're massively overperforming. The pitching has been very good. The bullpen was very good, save for Sunday. But, you know, there's other than you know, Chapman hitting very well, there's nothing happening that you're like, oh, my God, this is, you know, it's not the the 13 and 0 Rays. They're just playing very good baseball and they're doing it in a lot of different ways. They will slump. There will be injuries, there will be problems, but I think the most positive sign from that great month is it just sort of felt like they were going about their business, which is uh, nice. And this is traditionally a team the last two years winning in the 90s while having pretty bad starts. They had to save both of their last two seasons in September, and uh, hopefully if you're a Blue Jays fan, they don't have to do that this year to the same degree they had to do it in the past. You mentioned Matt Chapman there, Zoobs, and obviously he's been the main man so far this season offensively. He's been just brilliant, 384, all those weird stats. He's just bossing right now uh, as well. Are you surprised that he sustained it through the entire month and just keep going right now? He's You can't pitch to him. It's it's incredible. He's a guy that is making a million dollars every time he gets on base, it seems like. He's, he's going to be a free agent this year, probably going to get like $200 million. It's been nice. He's a guy that, that was quietly going through some injuries the last couple of years. It was a hip issue that he had talked about uh, in 2021, slowing him down quite a bit and um, getting some surgery when he joined the Jays. Maybe it takes a little bit of time to uh, fully recover from that, playing through recovery last year. He certainly looks the part. And not only has he been hitting so well, he's also like put the ball off the wall a handful of times. Like He could have even better numbers, which is crazy to believe. There is, of course, you know, April can be a, a bit of a fool month, a bit of fool's gold. But um, no, it, it's been great, especially you talk about, you know, the Teoscar Hernandez trade in the offseason and some of the concern that, you know, they're losing a bunch of offense and didn't repair it with offense. And their number four hitter isn't there. Chapman has stepped into that role um, and been as good, if not better than anything they've ever gotten from some of the guys they shipped out. So. Um, it's a surprise, yes. I don't think he's going to hit like 380 the entire year, but he's a guy that is capable of being um, an MVP vote receiver, a guy that is capable of being a no-doubt all-star, has done it in the past. So it's a nice return to form for a guy that has uh, a ton of skills in the bag. Zoobs, Bo Bichette had a monster home run last night. I think it was like 460 feet. Uh, he's batting over 300. His slugging is over 500. He leads the team in home runs. What do you make of Bo's opening month so far in the season? And can he sustain this throughout uh, the remainder of the season for the Jays? It's a great question. And it, it all starts for him with with strikeout rate. Like, I mean, the, the walk rate is still really low. The walk rate is still under 5%. It's those contact rates and not giving away at bats. When, when he is in, uh, in his slumps and when he is going quiet, some of the bats look non-competitive. He's swinging at bad pitches. And then you see, like we did last year down the stretch in August and September, he locks in and he's as good as anybody. I think focusing on getting out to a good start this year was very clearly um, the mission for him, right? Leading the American League in hits the last two years. And both of those times, again, similar to the team, really salvaging his year in the fall. I think that focus on starting well, and being uh, locked in the whole way is clearly paying its dividends. He looks great, uh, as you mentioned, hitting absolute tank home runs. 
I think it's it's an important part of this of this team because you know they've they've subtracted a little bit of depth in the bottom part of that lineup. The top four is going to have to carry them, and that has been the story offensively for them is that Bo and Chapman and Vladdy as well have sort of been the the tide that raises the boats for this team. And and he looks locked in. He looks great. I, I similar to to Chapman. I do expect there will be some regression. He will get a little too aggressive. Pitchers will adjust. He'll adjust. It'll be a cat and mouse game, um, but very little to complain about, especially at the plate from him right now. Uh, we're talking to Andrew Zuber. Zub, so the Jays send Jose Barrios to the mound of one Barrios, who's been pretty good with a couple of quality starts. Has he done enough to earn your trust moving forward that maybe he's back? Well, uh, you know, it's hard for me to trust. I'm a, I'm a, I can get, I can get cold. Um, but you know, <laughs> I try to, I try to not, especially with somebody like Barrios, you try to not make every single start be a referendum on who he is as a person. These things are fluid. Baseball season is like a living organism. It changes and it shifts and it moves. It's never in stasis, but you know, he's a guy that, that, that similar to some of the other guys in this rotation, the stuff has never been questioned. It's never been a question whether he has good pitches. It was a matter of location. And, you know, you look at the fix that they made a couple of years ago on Robbie Ray. It was as simple as throw that same stuff and just shift where you are so you're throwing it into the strike zone. Um, is it that simple? I would love to believe that it is. I don't know that it is. Uh, but it depends on 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 what you believe, right? He, he had as many quality starts last year as Kevin Gosman did. It just that the bad was very bad. But the bigger picture of work, the bigger um, amount of of innings, his entire middle of his career from 2017 to 2021, he was a mid threes, high threes ERA guy. Do I think he can be back to the tune of being a low four ERA guy? Absolutely, I do think that, and uh, it's been good signs. Uh, for the last little bit, I think uh, I think it's a it's a good spot, and and the pitches have looked sharp. The pitches have looked good. So if he keeps throwing strikes, I think it's a, it's about trusting in that and trusting in your stuff that you can be aggressive and attack the zone. Yeah, we have Mike Wilner on the show on Friday. He's saying the same thing that last year the abuse he took was a bit unfair in that he had quality starts, but the bad was just really really bad. What what did happen last year? We're seeing the real Berea so far this season, albeit early. But but what happened last year to be so bad at those times? Yeah, th things seem to really just spiral out of control. I mean, it is the the most fun narrative that if you take out when he was bad, he was good. That is uh, true for all of us in a way. But yeah, it, it was just sort of a matter of control and a matter of, um, you know, things sort of one thing leading to another, whether that's a mental thing, whether he's helped from the pitch clock, whether moving quickly is actually better for him. It's sort of a mystery. This is the part of sports psychology that is very hard to ever pin down. I think Chris Bassett is a guy you're seeing this year that like, one or two bad pitches can really get him in a funk for a whole inning. We saw that on Sunday, he didn't get a call. The first inning ends up unraveling on him. Um, you know, this, this is where you lean, I think, on your catcher a little bit as well. You lean a little bit on knowing when to come out and calm him down and talk to him. It'll be interesting to see if, if that continues forward. I think it just ends up being a, some nights you don't have it. And when he didn't have it, um, he wasn't fooling anybody. I think that, that if, if it to be so reductive, it could just be that simple. Uh, hey, Zub, so the Jays, they kick off a nine-game uh, road trip in Boston. Uh, as I mentioned, Bar Barrios on the mound for the Jays. Um, looking at the AL East, it's, I know it's, we talk about it all the time. It's a tough division, best division in baseball, whatever you want to name it. Every team above 500. Uh, do you think by the end of this season, we're going to see something unprecedented, like maybe four teams from this division making the playoffs? <laughs> it's pretty crazy. Uh, I mean, we are entering into a new year, of course, with the schedules a lot more balanced. And I mm -hmm. think what we've had revealing from that is that like the AL Central is dog water. Uh, everybody <laughs> is really bad. It's sort of, we, we already knew that a little bit, right? As, as Toronto fans, you sort of already got the feeling of like, hey, is it way harder for us than everybody else? Or am I going crazy here? Mm -hmm. It's been a little bit of played out. It's like, yeah, you could, Baltimore can beat up on the Royals. Yeah, Baltimore can beat up on, you know, the the, the dregs of these other divisions. Um, even Boston, right? Last year, the numbers look really bad, but they also got beat up in their own division a ton. And we're pretty good against the rest of the league. I think the AL East is on like a 120 win pace right now against the rest of the league. Uh, it's absurd. I think it will normalize a little bit. These teams will play each other a little bit. The Jays are going to play Boston. The Rays are going to cycle through. We're going to see a little bit more of these, not as extreme in the past, but I think things will settle down. You try not to get a little too fill, fooled by what happens in April, but um, I expect three. I expect uh, the, the Rays to hang on and the Jays to probably be in there. And then one of New York, or may I even say it, 
Baltimore could slip in. They look like a pretty mm. good team. I feel like Baltimore does this every single season. <laughs> They're so strong, so strong, and then they eventually just just die out, which might happen. Who knows uh, in the AL East? Andrew Zuber, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, if you want to hear more Zubes and more Blue Jay talk, check out his podcast, Less Than Jays. It's a fantastic listen. Thanks once again, Zubes. Always my pleasure. Have a great show, guys. All right, take care. 